Hello everyone. This video is already part of lesson number three. We are now concerned in identifying the measure the values that will correspond to these notations here. So given the coordinates for points P, Q, R, and S, we need to give the value for these notations. But what are these notations? What are these for? These notations, if you're going to just review your modules, actually pertains on the distance. Distance or the length of the measurement or the length of the segment or the measurement of the segment bounded by the points. So for number one, PQ is actually equivalent to the distance between points P and Q also equivalent to the length of the line segment bounded by points P and Q, or the measurement of the line segment bounded by points P and Q. And to solve for distance, we do have a postulate that states how to solve the distance between two points. And that is actually called as the ruler postulate. One of the statements in the ruler postulate tells us that the distance between the two points is actually the absolute value of the difference of their coordinates. So if we do, if we have two points, let's say P1 and P2, the distance is the absolute value of the difference between the coordinates of the points. Okay. So if we talk about this, we actually could get the distance of PQ as the absolute value of the difference between the coordinates of P and Q. And P is given as negative 1, and Q is given as 8. Take the difference and get the absolute value. If we are going to take its difference, you need to review operations of integers now. The result here would be negative. 9. And then the absolute value of 9 is positive 9. This would mean that the distance between points P and Q, or then again the measurement or the length of the line segment bounded by points P and Q, is 9 units. Before, when we talk about line segments, we are also said that if we have line segment PQ, this is also the same if we're going to interchange the points. Let's try to find out if we're going to solve for QP, do we still have the same value? Let's try. Q is eight minus P, which is negative one. Don't forget to place the double, the parentheses here, because if you will, if you do so, this will become, this will be applied with double negative property. So you have here 8, and that becomes plus 1. The absolute value, or 8 plus 1 is 9, and the absolute value of 9 is still 9. This is the further proof that line segments, when endpoints are interchanged, have the same measurements. So whatever would be, or regardless of if you're going to use here P1 and then P2 here, this could actually be true, or this is actually true, or if we're going to interchange it, absolute value of P2 minus P1, you will have the same result. Just make sure that you need to apply the correct properties of numbers or integers. Let's proceed to number two. Number two is SQ. So this is actually the absolute value of a difference of the coordinates of S and Q, or Q and S. Q, uh, S is negative 9. Q is 8. So the difference is negative 17. And the absolute value for that is 17. Next is RP. The absolute value, uh, I mean, RP is equivalent to the absolute value of the difference between the coordinates of R and P. Let me move this down a little bit. R 
is given to be 4, and P is negative 1. Again, don't forget the double negative property here, or the parenthesis, so that you could apply a double negative property. Because if you will not, and you will just simply say 4 minus 1, the answer would be absolute value of 3, and it will lead to 3. It's very different if you're going to apply here double negative property. You will have 4 plus 1, and that's 5, and the absolute value is 5. So, but which of the two is really correct? Another way of determining whether our results are correct or not is to simply place or a real number line. And then you have here R is at 4. And then P is at negative 1. The distance between two points could also be determined by the number of steps, integral steps. Since we are talking about integers, integral steps from one point to the other. So you have here 3, 2, 1, and 0. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The other way around, we also have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is another way of determining distances. But it's very uh, convenient for this because we only have 4 and negative 1. But what if we have 1 million and a negative 1 million? So we did this to determine that we have five steps. It would actually be a solid proof that we really need to be careful with our signs because this is actually correct rather than this without considering the parentheses and having a three, which is a very wrong answer. So please take note of that. Let's proceed to number four. S minus P. And it should always have absolute value because that's part of what is said in the ruler postulate. Okay. And aside from that, before I forgot, why is it that there is a need for us to have absolute value? Because if we don't have absolute value notation, look at this. Their answer would be negative 9 without the absolute value notation. And since we're talking about distance, measurements, lengths of line segments, all of those three are always positive. We don't have negative distance. We don't have negative measurement. We don't have negative length. You cannot say, I actually jog negative two kilometers a day, or the distance from my home to, this, uh, to the school, from, uh, from my home, uh, the distance of my home to my school is actually negative 10 kilometers. There's no negative measurements. That is why it's always emphasized to always consider and never forget the notation for absolute value. This is what would be wrong. Let's continue here. S is negative 9. And P is, again, here comes the correct process, minus negative 1. So you have negative 9 plus 1. Please do not forget your integers. This is not negative 10. Rather, that's absolute value of negative 8, which would actually give us the value of 8. And finally, for the last item, we have Q, R. Q is 8. Uh, let's have here first notation Q minus R. Q is 8. R is 4. Simply 8 minus 4 is 4, and its absolute value is positive 4. So as you can see, all of our results for this practice exercise, as this practice exercise pertains to distance, length, or measurement of line segments, they are all positive value. Because again, distance, lengths, or measurements of line segments are always positive. Please continue in working this and start reworking on your worksheets so that you could actually prepare for our assessment later. Goodbye. See you in the next video.